And it's red in the center and blue all around With a ribbon of gold in between And it's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain And it's the best country I've ever seen Hello and welcome to a postcard about flying crocodiles. Of course, crocodiles are usually happy on the ground, but in the Northern Territory they've been so happy on the ground they've built up to quite worrisome numbers. And the old to cull or not to cull debate has surfaced yet again. In Darwin Harbour alone, rangers like Tommy Nichols remove between two and three hundred crocodiles a year for relocation. It's virtually any saltwater systems, whether it's a uh, river, major river, billabong or even low-lying areas, that join up with a saltwater system, there's always a chance of a saltwater crocodile being in there. Uh, we had a lady who went out one night to uh, on a five acre block she lives. She's got a bit of a spa, plunge pool in her backyard, but she has no light over it. And so she was going for a swim one night and she just has changed her mind for some reason. So the next morning she got up and uh, went for a swim and here's this 2.4 metre saltwater crocodile sitting in this plunge pool. And it's a very small plunge pool, so she would have you see, I imagine she may have got bitten that night. And if anyone knows about biting crocodiles, it's Tommy Nichols. He grabbed the whole hand, I got scars through there, one tooth came out here. But fortunately he let go and he just grabbed the bottom section and he did all the damage where they twist because they got gripping teeth. And he just twisted, twisted my hand around, but he ripped the, the other two fingers and part of my hand off. It wasn't much fun at the time. And at Cooley Bar Station, a few hours southwest of Darwin on the Victoria River, it's not fingers that get taken, but stock. Oh, I'd reckon 40 or 50 cattle a year that we know of, you know. So owner Milton Jones flies them out. We used to come down here, we'd be lugging traps around and everything, but now just little lightweight traps under the chopper, raise away to go. I think we've probably got a bigger problem than anyone because a lot of the floodplain crocodiles, are, as I said, they only eat bog cattle and these fellas are hitting them off the bank here all the time, you know. Do you think it should, uh, they should do anything about it or do you think uh, the egg collecting is enough to keep the numbers down? I think the egg collecting is enough to keep it down. The, the trophy hunting's a pretty difficult thing to blitz because like you try and shoot one and he's... Gone, like that. Yeah, you know, and you don't know whether you've got him or not, so we're trapping them. You've got the animal, you know what I mean, you've got it. You can see everything from the sky. You see the crocodile, you put the trap and you catch him. You yeah. know, it's, it's like the barramundi. I told you there was three and we caught three. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you reckon they're cunning animals or they're just they're very primitive and very cautious? They're smart. They're good fishermen. See what he's, what that crocodile's done with that beast here today, he's fishing. I flew over him and I saw him laying beside it and I thought I'll land the helicopter and and uh, walked up there and had a bit of a look, you know, to see how big he was. And um, yeah, when I got when I got close to him, he'd come backwards a bit. And that's that was sort of that's how he was fishing, you know what I mean? He was waiting for something to come up, like a dingo or a pig or me. Yeah. And I got within about 20 foot, and he reared up at me right here beside me. Oh, where that little bank is. Yeah, you know that bit of a metre yeah. high bank. Well, he's just <laughs> exploded out of the water there and. I went, I went that way and <laughs> then back that way and out of there, you know. And out of there is precisely where this three metre female is headed. Just as soon as the small matter of dealing with an angry croc is attended. But in old hands like Milton Jones's, it's no problem. Wire noose here, a bit of duct tape there. A sling net. And in no time at all, this little girl's up, up and away. Flying down the river, straight into a holding pen at Coolabar, before being relocated to live out her life as a breeder on one of the croc farms in Darwin. From trap to pen, the whole process takes no more than an hour, which of course means less stress on the animal and a pretty easy job for all concerned. You've got to make work easier when you're getting older. It's bigger than Texas and flatter than Spain and it's the best country I've ever seen.